Hello, everybody. Uh, no class on Monday because of President's Day. Thank you, Presidents, for being born in February. So we're going to have to do these assignments without an introductory class to talk about them. So hopefully these videos will help you out, and this will count as your Tuesday attendance. So for this assignment, this is our observe assignment, we are looking at graphs of predator and prey relationships. We've learned a lot about how predator and prey relationships change and how they change populations, but now we have actual data and actual graphs that show us how they work. So if we look at this first plot here, we can see that on the y-axis, we have the number of the predator or the prey. So it's just the amount of animals. And then on the x-axis on the bottom here, we have the amount of time that has passed. So we can see that the number of prey is going up and down and up and down, up and down as time is going on. The same things happen to the predator, but they're happening in opposite times, back and forth, back and forth. So we're gonna go through and answer these first few questions about what's going on with this, about what's really happening. So the first one here, why do you think the prey population drops when the predator population increases? I'll give you an answer right off the bat here. So I just get you the kickstart here. So think about it for a second. Pause the video if you need to. Open up your assignment and type it in. Now, now that you've thought about that, we can go for it and say, hmm, the prey population probably drops because there are more predators eating them. Not eating eating them. With more predators eating them, less prey there's going to be. So predators are going to go up from eating a bunch of delicious food. Prey is going to drop because they are getting eaten more often. So we can go through these next few questions, and then we get to the real exciting part, which is right here. This is real data collected over a hundred years. So these are, it's kind of a famous case of this predator-prey relationship. A lynx, which is kind of like a bobcat, and a hare, which is like a rabbit. And you can see that there's a similar pattern to the graph we're looking at above, but it's a little bit more jagged because it's real data. Real data isn't quite as perfect and smooth as other things. So we can look at this um, and notice that parts of it where the blue is not, the blue is the lynx. So where there's blue but no red, that's where the lynx is actually a bigger population than the amount of hares. So there's more lynx in that time. It happened a few times. So go through these questions. Try to think about what's happening in this situation. Do your best to interpret these graphs. Just keep in mind that um, the bigger the spike, that means the more of that animal there is. So I'm sure you can do this. And if you don't think you can, you really can. Believe in yourself. You've got this.